Do you have trouble keeping your African violets happy? If you do, this is the right video for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of my very happy African violets, and I'll show you how I make my violets look this good. African violets are one of those really common, cheap, easy to find plants, and they're just beautiful, and they give you absolute bang for your buck. This is one of my violets here. She's looking brilliant. Just look at those leaves. They are as plump as anything, and those little pink flowers are just to die for. So what's the secret to African violets? Is having your African violets live in a semi-hydroponic setup. What do I mean when I say semi-hydroponics? If you look at this particular plant, keeping this plant in the clay balls, and what that means is that plant actually has a lot of air. The roots have a lot of air going through those little clay balls, unlike what it would have if it was living in soil. And this plant is also living in a cash pot. This is the cash pot and there's nutrient solution in that pot. You can see that liquid in there. That nutrient solution is made up of water and it can be a hydroponic nutrient or a specialist flowering plant nutrient, which is what I use for my African violets because they are flowering plants. I have two African violet plants here. This is a gorgeous plant with very beautiful white flowers there. And this is a miniature African violet, a little variegated plant. These plants are still living in soil. I'm gonna show you how you can move your African violet from soil to a semi-hydroponic setup. And when I say semi-hydroponic, I don't necessarily mean leka. You can use leka, you can use pond, you can use any sort of medium that you would put in a semi-hydroponic setup and your plant is living in a cash pot. So it doesn't just have to be leka, but the principles of this transfer will apply for any of the media that you're using. The first thing we're going to do is take the plants out of these pots and take the soil off those roots. These are African violets. The leaves and stalks are very, very, very delicate. You must be so gentle. I can bet you I won't get through this repotting without breaking any leaves. I'm pretty sure I'll do that. And that's that one out of that pot. So I'll just gently put that there and get the other one out as well. That's that little one there. And I just give that pot a very, very gentle squeeze and whoops, out it comes. I'm gonna take these two plants outside and I'm going to rinse off all the dirt and I will be right back. I've washed the plants off. This is the tiny, tiny one. It is so small. And I'm gonna show you what those little roots look like. Look at that. It's really, really small. They're so delicate. I tried my best to wash off as much of the organic matter as I could without causing too much damage to the plant. I nicked one leaf off, but that's okay. If you really want it, you could actually propagate that leaf so there's no waste with African violets. That is that big one right there. And that's the root system over there. Check that out. That is how thin and tiny those roots are. They are just microscopic. They're so, so small. That's as much of the organic matter as I could get off, to be honest. And that's okay, really, but look at how clean it is. Just make sure you clean all the soil off the plant as well. And that plant is now ready to go into leka. I'll bring you down and we'll do that. What's really important when you're putting African violets into leka is find the smallest leka that you can. It works best for all plants with very, very small, fine roots. So this is my Italian leka and it does have you know, mixed in with larger, but very, very small balls as well. So that works really well for my African violet. So just about, with African violet, you probably want to go slightly higher than a third. Normally we'd put a third of the leka up the pot, but because the root system is so small, you want the plants to really go deep into the pot. I'm gonna put it right in the middle but I want it to go pretty deep. So I'm happy with how much liquor I've got in there. 
that's where the plant rests. So I'll start to fill up the lecker and lift up the plant as I'm going just a little bit. So I'm just literally putting one ball of lecker in at a time because I want those roots to actually have contact with the lecker and be anchored into the lecker as well. So I'm getting the smallest bits of lecker that I can find and just lifting up those leaves and putting that lecker in there. Okay, I'm happy with that. And that's my little African violet, my miniature African violet now living in lecker. So I'll put that one aside and do the big one. I've got this pot for my big one. So in goes the lecker. So I think, so that's just, just under halfway up the pot. Grab the plant and do the same thing as I did for the little one. So really, I want my plant to be sitting like that. So what I want to do now is put that lecker in the side. So as I'm doing it, as I'm putting the lecker in, just pushing the plant to the side and whacking that lecker in. So wanting to keep the plant in the center, so turn it around a few times as you're doing this. Okay, that is my larger African violet living in Lekka in that pot and it's well secured it's well secured in that pot and well anchored in the lecker. That's my two plants over there. I'm really, really happy with this. Of course, what's really important is that this lecker should have been soaking for not less than 24 hours in a rooting solution. My lecker, this particular lecker, has actually been soaking in this solution for about five days, actually. I've been preparing for this and I had that lecker soak for the longest time because I knew I was gonna put my African violets in that and I wanted that lecker to be really primed to have that nutrient solution well embedded inside the lecker so that once the plant hits that lecker, that root growth is going to start immediately and my plants are going to transition smoothly. I'm going to get a cash pot. This is a cash pot and I'll put my little plant in there. I will then get my rooting solution. I like to use what I call my special source, which is a combination of growth technology, clonics clone solution and root zone. And I will fill this reservoir up to about a third of the way. And in that way, I ensure that that nutrient solution is not touching those little roots. And then the roots will grow and the plant won't have root rot. I'll do the same thing for my large African violet. I'll put it in there and that's going to live in that with that nutrient solution. I'll put those two plants on my heat mat, give them some relatively good light and within a few weeks, the plants will be completely transitioned through to Lekka and they'll be living their life in semi-hydroponics and things are going to go very well, I would imagine. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with these little flowers as this plant is transitioning. I would ideally like to do it when the plant is not flowering. Any major changes that you're making to a plant, best not to do when it's flowering, but I had no choice. I couldn't find any other African violet that wasn't flowering to buy from the store. So I had to get this one and yeah, we'll just see what happens. It's been 65 days since I got my African violets out of soil, put them in Lekka. Let's see what's happening. This is the big African violet that I put into Lekka. This is the one that had the white flowers. And as you can see, those flowers are very well spent and I didn't want to take them out because I wanted you to see what they look like. So all I need to do with these is just pull them out, clip them off and the plant is fine. As you can see, the leaves are pretty firm. They're looking very decent. There's been very minimal leaf loss, if any. There's like that one but that's normal for African violets to do that. If you're finding value from this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. 
Now, let's see what's happening in the root department. So as you know, it's been literally about two months. So I expect that something has been happening with these roots and the roots are growing. Let me see if I can find some roots. So if you look over there, you can see that there's a little bit of root action going on there. With this particular plant, I am not going to take it out of the lecker to show you. The roots are so very delicate and so very fine. I don't want to disturb them at all. But as you can see, the plant is looking healthy. It's looking fine. I think that transition has worked really, really well for this plant. So moving forward, definitely transitioning African violets from soil to lecker. I would be using the method that I use for a bigger plant like this one. That worked absolutely beautifully. I'll get rid of those and next flowering season, I'm pretty sure that plant is going to flower and it is going to be fabulous. So that worked. Now let's see the other one. Dun dun. That was an epic fail, ladies and gentlemen. Epic fail. That, you know, that's the plant there. It did not work at all. I tried, I really tried to save this plant. And, you know, I couldn't do too much because it was an experiment. It was sat next to this one exactly same conditions but that little variegated one just did not survive and i'm thinking maybe the plant was a little bit too small it needed to grow a bit those roots were just too fine and it just couldn't take i don't know so i think the take-home message for me is i will not be transitioning very very small african violets from soil to lecker I'll stick to plants that are a little bit more established and that are able to take that transition from soil to lecker a bit easier. The roots of an African violet are very, very thin and very similar to those of a peperomia. Go and check out this video where I convert a variegated watermelon peperomia from soil to lecker. See you there.